it is World Theatre Day today. I'm really gutted that for World Theatre Day I did not get to go to the theatre. Um, but uh, I was travelling back from Essex where I was visiting my mother for Mother's Day yesterday and uh, I just didn't, didn't get a chance to go to the theatre unfortunately. I would love to. That's definitely the main way to celebrate World Theatre Day. Go see a production if you can. If you can't though, you know, maybe read a play. I've got a whole bookshelf of plays over there, so I might have a flick through and read one of those in a minute. Um, but I thought I'd just do this video about my my history with theatre, my love of theatre. I have been involved with amateur theatre for, God, since I was eight, probably. Maybe no, younger than that in, in a kind of tangential sense. From my, my mum and my stepdad were involved in an amateur theatre group when I was younger. And I went along to the rehearsals, obviously, because so they didn't have to hire a babysitter. Um, and, and I sat there quietly, either, you know, doing some colouring or whatever, while they rehearsed. And this would be when I was maybe like five or six, that sort of age. And, um, and so, sort of, it started seeping into my consciousness then, even though I was, you know, there sitting in the corner, not really watching what they were doing. Just on a subconscious level, it was starting to seep in. And then when I was about eight, my stepdad was directing, um, what was it? It was a, it was an adaptation of Christmas Carol, Scrooge the Musical or something like that. And they needed the Cratchit family. They needed all the kids. Uh, so I, I got a non-speaking part on it. Uh, I wasn't Tiny Tim, that was my best friend Katie, but I was just, uh, I was just a Cratchit kid around the table in uh, about two scenes no lines whatsoever I just had to sit there and pretend to eat food basically but that set me off on on my road to like being in amateur theatre productions the very next year in with the same theatre group I was in their pantomime as child leader I had lines that time not only did I have lines I was the head of the kid gang in the pantomime that was quite fun and I had to sing we as the kids we had to sing a song in that what was it it was Jack and the Beanstalk and we were a group of kids that followed Jack up the beanstalk and we were singing a song about what we do to the giant. How did it go? We'll bite his ankles, we'll burn his socks with a thousand volts and electric shocks and that will make his curly locks stand on end. Of course we must be very quick to do the things we said because it's almost half past eight and it nearly is time for bed. <laughs> Oh, I'm amazed I remember that. It was like 23 years ago and I still remember the song. So I was off then and I was in like the next several pantomimes for that group. And then when I was a teenager, I joined a local musical group in a, in a nearby town, uh, which was on a bit more of a bigger scale than the small town theatre group I was, I was a member of um, with my parents. Um, and I was in things like Fame and 42nd Street, all usually chorus roles, all very small minor character roles. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't like an amazingly amazing singer, uh, but I, you know, could hold a basic tune enough to be in the chorus basically, or to do some char character acting, which didn't involve any solo songs. So I usually got those parts. And then uh, and then I went to uni after I did a few, I did about four or five shows with those. And then I went off to uni and I started rehearsing for stuff in uni. But I got, um, but the first production with the uni society kind of fell through and, uh, and that was it. And then I kind of dropped out of doing acting for a few years while I was at uni, which was a shame. But I kind of got tied up with doing radio stuff. I was doing, studying media production and specialising in radio and I was quite involved in the radio, uh, the student radio station, so that kind of took over a bit. I did a bit of acting in some student films and things, but that was about it. In terms of theatre though, I had been bitten by the bug by that point, and by that point I was quite into going to see musicals in London. Uh, I'd gone to see so like about one a year, roughly, maybe, um, with my parents and things, um, or school trips and college trips. Um, oh yeah, and at, and at sixth form I had studied uh, theatre and um, drama and theatre studies. So we'd done a lot of theatre trips and that, and that's when I got into really serious plays. That's when I discovered Bertolt Brecht and those kind of things. Um, and that was really good. I really liked that. Um, and I think that's where my love of serious drama came from. The theatre group that my parents were involved in did, you know, 
they didn't do much serious drama. So that my love of that came from my A levels, I think. And then I got back into it when I left uh, uni and uh, moved to a town where I joined another theatre group that did musicals. Then I moved to where I live now, and I was a bit bored of musicals by that point, so I, I wanted to find a group that did plays, so I've done that. And now I'm uh, still in that group and still occasionally doing stuff, so I do... I've been in several of their plays in the last three years, and I've been... I've directed one last year as well. I directed their dystopian drama called The Lifesavers. So... Fun. Um, Theatre is theatre is very important. I think it theatre is an amazing device. If you if you love storytelling, then there's no reason why you shouldn't love theatre, because it's just a medium. If you like hearing interesting stories, whatever type of interesting stories you like, there will be that type on the stage. And if you like romantic comedies on telly, why would you not like them on stage? If you like dystopian dramas on uh, dark things on on telly or film. Why would you not like them on stage? So if you like, if you if you're sitting there thinking, ah, oh, you know, theatre's not for me. Well, I don't really like going to watch theatre. It's not all the same. It's as varied as any other medium. It's as varied as television. It's as varied as film. It's as varied as radio. Uh, check something out. Look, whatever films you like, there will be an equivalent genre in theatre. What? theatre so go check it out. You know I missed a whole bit of my theatre story. When I was started my sort of working in radio my first job in radio was actually working in the radio drama department at the BBC and that's basically an extension of the theatre world because it's all theatre actors it's all theatre writers writing this stuff um, and that was really interesting that was really you know, I got to learn even more about local theatre scene. I went to so much theatre while I was watching there because we used to do it for casting research. We used to know, we were, we were on the cast from people that were running London stage at that time because A, they were around, we knew they were around, so they could often spare half a day or a day to come into a studio. It doesn't take long to record an audio drama. And, uh, and yeah, I learned a lot and I got to know a lot of playwrights personally which was good and um and professionally as well so I know of a lot more playwrights than I would have done before I think that's when I really started to learn about the people behind the plays rather than just the actors on the stage anyway happy international world theatre day international world theatre day world theatre day can't remember which what it's actually called but happy it anyway, and I will see you tomorrow for another video, another festivity. I'll be celebrating something else, so please join join me then. Uh, like, sh subscribe, share, and all that jazz. And I, uh, yeah, see you for the next video. Bye.